I'm so excited because tonight USC is welcoming the first peak of USC. So tell me, you are the king of pork. You're the big uh, supporter of heritage pork. So I, I am. I was um, king of pork. Uh, recently crowned, and so to do that, we're, we're celebrating you know, not only the, the, the trip to, to, to Dorne uh, from a culinary standpoint, but also the uh, you know the celebration of heritage wheat pork. So I have a, a Duroc pork, uh, which I've turned into a, a crown. So it's this you know very festive uh, meat crown. I think uh, we're, we're worth fighting over, um, and we're done it sort of in a uh, bibel style. So you know, with the, with a fresh natto and citrus, so it's it's bright, it's fruity, uh, you know, it, it's fun, and but it's also very filling. So I, I figured a very festive dish, uh, but also for some of those more hearty, you know, northern type meals, it's kind of it's kind of satisfying. It's perfect for a king like young Joffrey, who we lost last season. <laughs> There's a lot of kings. I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning to not get so attached to the kings because they just they go so go so quickly, but. Uh, no love lost with the with the loss of Joffrey, I think. <laughs> so, what are your influences as a chef? So, as a chef, I'm I'm a native Angelino, and you know my restaurant, Broken Spanish, and Vias Taqueria, where we are right now, um, both pull from those experience as as an Angelino and and sort of a a, a native, um, you know, we call it comida angelina. So, it, it's a Mexican cuisine, but really from the region of, of Los Angeles. Uh, so it takes from a lot of other, you know, cultural influences here in a, in a town full of, uh, of, of, of migrant uh, food and, and culture um, and present it in a way that, that, that we feel is, is, is comfortable and, and strikes a chord with, with so many uh, Angelinos. Well, I'm super excited to watch you work as well as get ideas. But people who are here in L.A. can come to Taqueria for a more casual Feast, but if you want to go all fancy, they should be going to your new restaurant, which is opening up this spring. So at the end of the spring, we have uh, Broken Spanish. Um, that's opening up right here in downtown on Flower Street. Um, or you can come in right now at the Taqueria on, on 7th in downtown as well. Sounds great. I can smell something cooking, and I can see what looks like banana leaves. So yeah, we have uh, we have banana leaves. Um, so well, it's important with any feast, I think, is is uh, a lot of the, of, of the visual, of the display, of the unveiling. Um, so for our crown of park, I think it would be uh, only appropriate that, that we have it sort of wrapped in its, in its own uh, cooking vessel, which is the, uh, the banana leaf. Uh, very sturdy, so it allows for you know, the moisture to stay into the, uh, the, the pork or whatever you're cooking. Uh, but they're, they're not very pliable, so what we have to do is just heat them up a little bit, and you'll see quickly that they take on the structure breaks down a little bit and releases some of that oil. Oh wow, it's popping. It is popping. So this is what we're going to actually use to, uh, to cook the pork in. Again, it'll impart some, impart some of that flavor and then it'll also keep the, uh, the product uh, nice. And this should be a, a great pairing with the two L's that Omegang has given out the last couple of years. This year it's the Three-Eyed Raven, which is a little light, a little bit fruitier, I think will match well with pork. I think it's going to go great with the pork. You know, just like you, you'll find from, from the dish, there's similar notes in the, in the beer itself that are bright and they, and they pop. And so the, the pork itself is going to have some, a lot of citrus, some chilies, a little bit of garlic. Cool. Tell me about this feast. Perfect for the upcoming season of Game of Thrones. So this is a, a dish that I think would be perfect for uh, the kickoff of, of a brand new season. Um, very bright, very colorful, um, and, and full of surprises that we're going to unveil. You know, right now this is a, uh, a crown of, of pork, so done in more of a pibil style. So uh, Corona pibil. Well, it looks fabulous. And this is from a heritage pig. This is a, a Duroc uh, pig, so part of a heritage breed uh, pig. Very exciting. So let's do the unveiling. Dun 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 We only had a map that was kind of just moving around every part. I can smell the spices. So it sounds like you've used some brightly colored peppers. So we have some some habaneros, which are you know not only bright in color but very big and bold in in taste and spice. 
because it's all about the aromatics. We have some of these uh, banana leaves that we wrapped them in. So that imparts a little bit of flavor and you can see it keeps it nice and moist right it there. It does look really moist. So chef, as you're unveiling this gorgeous heritage crown, perfect for the upcoming season, tell me a little bit more about your influences and how this is a great fit for Game of Thrones finally going to Dorne. So I think a lot of the, you know, visually and from a flavor standpoint, you're, you're going to taste a lot of uh, big, bright, you know, bold flavors that I think you would associate with, uh, with, with Dorne in itself. You can see the, you know, the, the oranges, the reds, the textures, the colors, and a nice juicy uh, center right here. So it, it's definitely a spice forward uh, dish. And visually it's gorgeous and it does remind me a lot of the crown. There it is. So now we have the, the, the full rack. Yeah, again, uh, a crown worth fighting over here. And you can just smell some of the, the fresh chilies, the tomato, the natto seed, kind of uh, waking up as we as we remove that that, that veil there of, of banana leaf. Wow, you can smell it, and it looks delicious. I don't think I've ever really had a lot of heritage pork, except when I went to the Koshan event where you were judging this year in Santa Monica, California. Yeah, and this is you know it, it's great to uh, support and important to support you know our farmers who are growing these heritage breed. Um, animals, and then we do so at both of the restaurants at the Taqueria and at, at Broken Spanish. So well, here. I am very excited to taste this, and more importantly, to learn more about Broken Spanish. We'll be opening here downtown LA sometime this um, late spring. Late, late spring. Late spring. So it's, it's opening up. So you can get uh, festive dishes like this, or you can come in now to the Taqueria and already taste some of these, you know, big, bright, vibrant flavors. Well, I think this is a perfect match for the Amagay. Three-eyed raven. Let's grab some pork, and better still, let's grab a little bit of game. Sounds good. So, chef, can you do us the honor of opening Amagang three-eyed raven, dark size and oil ale, which will be um, available for the average consumer this week, perfectly in time for the upcoming season. It would be my pleasure. Now, have you tried Amagang? I've tried Amagang. Oh, you have? I, I love Amagang. This is just a, a new one for me, so I'm I'm happy to be able to to share it with you today, Sherry. Wow, it's like a champagne bottle. See, I, I've opened one before. <laughs> <laughs> Sherry, have you tried Amagang before? Oh, it's beautiful. It's going to go great with that pork. I can smell it already. It does look perfect. It's dark in color, but it's really bright and lively. I think sort of like the uh, the Duroc itself. Well, it's not bright and lively like Game of Thrones, so I think there's <laughs> going to be a lot of head turning this year with a bunch of head beheading, and I did see the season premiere already. Burning. <laughs> <laughs> as, long as, as long as not faces exploding, I think I can, uh, I can get into it. So let's try a little bit of this heritage pork. around the bone. I've never cut anything. I've never no, had cut, anything like this cut before. Through. So, um, okay. Oh, wow. We cut it a little bit of us, so it's not going to be hot as well. So you just kind of go in between the bones. Mm -hmm. And what you see, that the beauty of the heritage breed pig is that it's not just a, a solid white. It does have some of that, that pink, and it has some uh, really interesting natural characteristics that you don't find in other commodity pork. It looks unlike the pork I normally get at the grocery store. Oh, it's a nice piece of the pig itself. Wow, it's delicious. Nice and displayed. I feel like it should be celebrating Joffrey's birthday right now, <laughs> or worse, or still the red wedding. <laughs> Nobody wants a red wedding. I think it's a much happier time to eat this. <laughs> So, Chef, 
we're ready to taste. I love how you um, added the the citrus to the dish, to the pork, to the heritage pork. Well, it's not just about the you know the presentation, but it's also the, the colors that and the and the flavors and the the scents that come through. You know, so I, I'm always big on you know presenting whatever you know the finished dish is with some of the uh, components and flavors uh, that it was cooked with. So here you have some of that that citrus that is you know the base of the of the marinade and some of that that bright light fruity flavor, um, which I think is going to go really great with this uh, oma gang. So let's get to tasting. Let Let's do that. That's why I'm here. You gotta have to join me. <laughs> I shall. Or else I'm just gonna cheat and say it's delicious. Oh, I can't cheat. Oh, it's really good. It's not a grocery store pork chop. It does not taste like a grocery <laughs> store pork chop. And so this is your favorite breed of um, heritage pork that you use at your restaurants. How do you just... How did you arrive at this particular breed? Well, I, I wouldn't say that it's just my, my favorite, but I think that, that every breed has a unique characteristic that is, you know, um, great for, for different preparations. I think, you know, the Duroc has a, a great, you know, fattiness in the loin that sometimes other pigs don't have. Um, and it provides for like a great texture and, and nuttiness and, and flavor in, if you cook it properly. <laughs> I'm not as good a cook as you. So anyone who wants to try some delicious Latin inspired LA native food has to come downtown LA to either Broken Spanish or BS Taqueria. Which sounds great. This is just really a beautiful dish. And I can't wait for your new restaurant to open, which is your uh, newest incarnation of your influences. Coming this spring. But a feast isn't complete, of course, without some uh, dessert. So we made a, uh, a delicious tres leches cake that we're going to uh, to taste now. And that is what you're known for. It, it's one of the desserts that we are uh, we are known for. It, it's a very traditional uh, dish that we put our our spin on with some uh, muscovado uh, meringue, um, and it's 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 delicious. I cannot wait to try it. Yeah. <laughs> this is so cool. And is that a? Crown, I detect on top of it. So we, we've we've made sort of a sponge sugar crown um, in in the spirit to uh, to mimic the uh, the pork crown and also <laughs> to celebrate the uh, you know the, the Game of Thrones coming up. Because this year they are all fighting about the crown. They are going all over the place, plotting and scheming, and I cannot wait for season five. Who are you hoping to see in season five? Yeah. I it's tough. I've always been. I've been watching since the beginning, and I've been a, a big, uh, big uh, Stark family supporter. Uh, but it seems like their odds keep on keep on <laughs> dwindling as they get further and further away from uh, from King's Landing. So um, we'll see. I think it's it's, it's anyone's uh, game has been uh, shown over the last four seasons. It is. You can't love anyone on Game of Thrones. No, you can't get too attached. Too <laughs> <laughs> well, I cannot wait to try this, Chef. Please. Can we just? Dig on in with a spoon here. Here's a plate if you want to be formal. I'm not formal. Okay. Me neither. I'll hold the plate while you uh, eat So this. is this like uh, the Tres Leches Yerimami? Uh, it's, a, it's a hybrid of a lot of uh, Tres Leches cakes, you know, out there. I think it's a, it's, 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 it's a standard, um, you know, standard dish that I think we, we put our own, our own spin on. So it has, you know, evaporated milk, condensed milk, some cream. Uh, and there's some beautiful uh, sugar work, which I'm not sure mom uh, has mastered just yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's delicious. I cannot wait to come down to the restaurant for when I'm in the mood to have my own feast without having to cook. Please do. Please do. We hope to see you uh, down uh, soon here in downtown LA, BS Taqueria and Broken Spanish. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Harry.